Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Simon Eddles, your sales director here at Travel Bulletin, and it's a real pleasure to welcome you to Travel Bulletin's latest webinar, focused this time on the Pacific Islands region. Um, so who do we have with us today? Well, we have two great supplier partners. We have the Samoa Tourism Authority and we have Tourism Fiji. They are each going to deliver a live 10 minute presentation on their particular destination, followed by a 10 minute Q&A session. Now, I'm going to ask you now to remember when we do the uh, when you're doing the presentation, when you're sort of listening to the presentations from each of the suppliers, if you can, please um, pop me some questions through on the Q&A function. It really helps if you've got um, something that you have either been asked by a client or if you've got something personal because you've been there before or you're looking to visit and you'd like to know something on behalf of well for your own reasons um, but ideally if it's client related then if we can do that and get some wonderful questions across to our suppliers it helps them um, and it really makes it worthwhile for them if there's some good engagement from you guys as well so that would be good remember use the Q&A function for that and we'll get as many questions of those answered as we can each presenter will also announce their competition prize and a question at the end of their training session. So you'll need to uh, enter your answers after the webinar um, has finished via travelbulletin.co.uk forward slash webinar competition. Now, many of you have been to a number of our um, webinars before. So I'm so you've got that sort of logged in and on your home page already, you know what that is. So that'll be up and running later on today. And the deadline to win today's prizes will be Monday, February the 1st at 4pm. So um, we've got some wonderful gift boxes uh, kindly donated by our partners. And also we're giving away a £40 Amazon voucher um, up for grabs later on. So I hope you're all feeling lucky. OK, let's get started. Um, without further ado, let me introduce today's first presenter, who's um, Sebastian Sarazin, the account director for Samoa Tourism. Um, please say hello. To, give us a wave, Seb. Hi, Simon. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Um, are you well and are you feeling particularly warm or I don't think you are. You're just telling us how warm it is in Samoa at the moment, aren't you? <laughs> Sadly, I am not in Samoa. I'm in the middle of Essex at the moment. So like you, I'm suffering from the cold, but I'm very well and I'm delighted to be here today. Fantastic. OK, so um, let's uh, let's move swiftly along to, to you telling us about wonderful, beautiful Samoa. I'll pass it over to you. OK, thank you very much, Simon. And I'm going to attempt to share my screen. Here we go. I hope you can all see the screen there. Well, Talofa, everybody. Talofa is hello and welcome in Samoa. Um, I'm Seb Saris and I'm the account director for the uh, Samoa Tourism Authority based in the UK. Uh, and over the next few minutes, I'm going to try to give you a bit of a flavor for our destination and why you should really keep it on your radar and recommend it to your customers going forward. Uh, first of all, where are we? Well, we are right in the middle of the South Pacific. And uh, in fact, um, we are halfway between Australia and North America. That map is not up to scale. If you look at a normal map, you will not see us on the map unless you zoom quite a bit. But that hopefully is going to give you a bit of an idea of where we are. Um, technically, we are the furthest you can possibly travel from the UK. It's a minimum of 30 hours, three flights. So uh, some people may think, oh God, not for me, far very, very far indeed. Uh, the reality, however, is that the majority of European people coming to visit us in Samoa would be combining us with a mainstay in Australia or New Zealand or combined with other South Pacific destinations. Uh, and the reality is that once you are in the region, accessibility is very easy and the flight connections are relatively fast. We do have daily connection out of Auckland, New Zealand, operated by a couple of airlines. Uh, for a flight time of three and a half hours. 
We are also connected um, to Australia from Brisbane and uh, from Sydney. Flight time from Australia about five hours. And for those who want to combine a few South Pacific destinations, we do have daily connection to the lovely islands of Fiji, Monday through to Saturday for a flight time that can vary between two and three hours. And then finally, as of last year, we are also connected to uh, Tonga, which takes two hours to reach the North Island and four hours to reach the South Island. We are a very small country, officially 10 islands, only four of which are inhabited. However, uh, we only really have two main tourist destinations and that would be the main hub of Upolu, home to our international airport and home to our only city. And when I say city, really, it's a very large village. Apia is our capital and is home to approximately 45,000 inhabitants. And then the second um, tourist destination will be the larger island of Savai. When I say large, it's very relative. It only takes five and a half half hours to drive around it uh, and it is home to only 45,000 inhabitants so lots of space on the island of Savai. Both islands are connected via a ferry service, it takes an hour and it's running regularly from early morning until uh, late afternoon. Uh, we are an independent country since 1962 however prior to this we were administered by New Zealand which means that we've got two national languages English and Samoan. Uh, being an independent country, we've got our own currency as well, the Samoan Tala. You will struggle to buy uh, Talas in the UK. However, it is available in Australia, New Zealand or upon arrival uh, at the airport uh, in Apia. To give you an idea of the exchange rate, one pound will buy you approximately four Talas. And just to put things into perspective and show you how good value for money we are, um, one pound 50 will buy you a large pint of local beer in any bar or restaurant in, uh, in Apia. So we are a very good value for money destination. Uh, no visa required for British or European passengers, just a um, passport that's valid for a minimum of 60 days. So why do people come to see us? Well, here we go. I feel here that the slide is really doing all the talking, it is truly that beautiful. None of those images have been photoshopped. Uh, and hopefully uh, at the end of the presentation, I will be able to show you a short video that will um, show you the beauty of our islands. Um, Samoa is still a very poor country. We are officially part of the third world. Uh, and as such, we've got no precious metal, we don't have any oil, we export very little. What we do have in spades, however, is beautiful untouched landscapes. Uh, and it is incredibly important for the locals to preserve this ecosystem and pass it on to the future generation. Uh, and because our islands are so small and it's so easy to get from one place to another, within a matter of minutes, you can find yourself from a beautiful white sandy beach with turquoise blue water to a volcanic site. Uh, a few minutes later, you will find yourself at the foot of a mountain. You can uh, then go and take a dip in one of the cave pools that you can see on the slides. So we've got a very diverse ecosystem. And it's not just about beautiful landscape, but it's about beautiful people. And I'm sure that Jane will echo me in her presentation. What makes the South Pacific so special is really its, its inhabitants. They are some of the kindest, smilest, most generous people you will ever get to meet. And they are incredibly proud of being Samoan. Culture is really very important in Samoa. Keeping the traditions alive and pass them on to the future generation is a duty for each Samoan. And there are various ways your customers will be able to immerse themselves into this very rich culture. My personal favorite, hire a car upon arrival. We drive on the left-hand side of the road. There is very little traffic, so it's very easy to get around. And you will be able to stop in any of the 362 villages dotted across the island. Uh, and you will always be a welcome with open arms. You will be given a tour of the village, um, probably introduced to the village chief called the Matai. Although we are a republic and we've got a prime minister in place, the real political leaders in Samoa still remain the village chief. 
uh, and they will be giving you a tour of the facilities and probably even invite you to feast with them uh, in the evening, which is a village affair. Everybody gathers together under one open kitchen in the center of the village. Uh, and it's really a time to um, communicate with your fellow villagers, talk about your day, um, sometimes play music, do some dancing, drink um, some ava. Uh, it's a great experience that your customers will be able to uh, enjoy. Alternatively, you can visit the cultural center, which is located at the back of our office in Apia, where you will be able to witness this very rich culture. People also come down to Samoa because there's plenty of activities on offer. No man-made attraction, no water park, that's not what we're all about. It's really all about the great outdoors. Obviously, any water activities can be found, scuba diving, snorkeling, fishing, surfing. But we also have a lot of tracks in the middle of the main islands where you can do mountain biking, trekking, hiking kayaking in the mangrove as well. And we are like most destinations in the South Pacific, a very romantic destination as well. Uh, and we've got many European coming to Samoa on honeymoons or just on the romantic break or even renew their vows if they wanted to since uh, getting married or renewing um, the vows is legal in Samoa. It can be organized through your uh, tour operator or DMC of choice. Finally, I wanted to also mention our wide range of accommodation. We only have 200 properties on the islands, uh, two of which are part of an international chain. We've got the Sheraton in the city center of Apia, as well as a, a local a South Pacific brand called Tomasina located in Apia. But with the exception of those two um, properties, all of the others are independently run and operated. Samoa has been sustainable from the very beginning of modern tourism in the 1950s. Uh, and um, the money that arrives on the island really stays on the island. It benefits the hotel owner, which are locals, but also the villages around who happen to own um, the land on which the resorts are operating. And we really have a wide range of accommodation from backpacking huts on the beach, which you can see on the top right corner of the, um, the slide there, to a very good um, selection of four, four star plus hotel, which uh, are usually very small, very boutique. There would be typically between 10 and 15 accommodations, some of which um, are adult only resort. As I said earlier, we are very popular with honeymooners. So I'm based in London, as I mentioned earlier on. These are my details. If you need anything going forward, please do reach out. You find my email address and phone number on there. We've got a B2C website, some other travel, a trade partner website where you can download lots of lovely videos and images that Samoa brand kit. Io. We're obviously all over social media. The handle is Samoa Tourism. And last but not least, we are also on the OTT training platform. So if you want to learn more about our beautiful islands, head over to ott.travel and look up for the beautiful Samoa course uh, on the platform. So hoping that the technical gods will be on my side, I'm going to ask Hannah to uh, play a very short video, which I hope is going to summarize everything I've just told you about over the last 10 minutes. And then I will be more than happy to take any questions that uh, may come our way after that.
doesn't hurt to know Believe it or not, it's okay to take it slow Wonderful. Thank you very much for that, Seb. That was um, that was really informative, really good fun, but also a fantastic video. Really, really, really uh, got in the mood for that there. Um, got some wonderful questions from our travel agents who have been watching over throughout the country and mostly are very cold and miserable because they're That's in... Sorry. <laughs> So, okay, I've got, I'm going to fire them across because we've got lots of different ones from, from different people. So let's start off with, um, uh, let's go with uh, Lisa asks, uh, Lisa Towers asks uh, languages. I know you did say it in your presentation, the two languages. Can you just reiterate them again, please? Right. So the official language is Samoan. Uh, however, everybody speaks English currently because we were uh, administered by uh, New Zealand until our independence in 1962. So everybody can speak both languages, really. OK, good. I think it's good because it's, it's great to know that people feel comfortable in terms of going from here, knowing that they'll be understood and what have you. So um, that's a, Suzanne Smith asks, can you get married there? And if so, how long do you have to be there before that is that works yeah you can get married legally in Samoa and that will be recognized anywhere in the world um, there is a few um, things that you need to do first of all you need to file um, with the local authorities at least 14 days prior to arrival to operate a selling Samoa in the UK or if you work with DMCs can organize that for you the cost of the marriage license is 12 pounds uh, and you need to stay at least 48 hours in Samoa before you can uh, get wed. Okay, I think that covers every single possible question that anyone had there. That's great. Um, Angela Tad asks, um, do you, she said you didn't need to, you didn't used to, but since we left the EU, is that still the case in terms of no visa? Yeah, that, that, that hasn't changed anything. So as long as you stay, uh, as long as you stay um, for less than 60 days, just a valid passport. Okay, um, and uh, Karen Louise asks, how many tourists does Samoa get every year, roughly? It, it's very, very small numbers, really. I mean, from, from our main market would be Australia and, and New Zealand, for obvious reasons, it's next door. Uh, then Europe, it's a few thousand out of Europe. It, it really isn't uh, massive numbers. But, but then again, 
um, the government uh, will not really allow massive numbers. Over tourism scares the authorities and the locals, uh, really. And so they really try to contain tourism. There is space for more. So by all means, please send your customers to some more. <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's a few thousand. I don't have the exact numbers. Yeah. Uh, but I would say possibly before COVID, we were probably looking at maybe about 5,000 European, uh, mostly Brits and, and Germans. These are our biggest market in Europe. So it's a few thousand, but it's still very low numbers. Okay. Um, I've been asked by, William Thompson asks, there, he, thinks they, they, he says there used to be a connection via, via LAX. Is that possibly going to restart? Has it been considered at all? There's, there's been talks going on for as long as been working on the account. There used to be a, an airline, Polynesian airline, that was actually linking all of those South Pacific islands. There are projects going on. I've heard a lot of, of, of rumors. I don't know if any of them will materialize. LA, Samoa, uh, it's not on the cards for any time soon. However, there is a way to do LA, Hawaii. And then Hawaii, Samoa, which is only operating once a week on Saturday, and it's a five-hour journey from Honolulu to Samoa. But that's the only way to connect with the U.S. at the moment. Okay, well, that's that's good to know. Um, I've got another question as well with regards to... Ah, yes, Lorraine Crow asks, um, after the event, are you able to send out things like the video and part of the presentation and everything for, for agents to use? Absolutely, yeah, we'll be able to do that once I get the list of, of the attendees. I can I can send out a copy of the presentation, contact details for the MCs, uh, and so forth. So yes, I, I will I will do that. I will follow up after. The okay, event. that's great. Um, I was going to also I've got um, Jane asks Jane Walsh asks um, she missed the name of the chain hotels. There was a couple of chain hotels. Um, are those, can you so run through those? We've things? got two. Sheraton is operating a property in the city centre of Apia, which is the Aggie Grey Hotel and Bungalows, which is probably our most famous hotel. They are operating it, they're not owning it, it's still part of the Aggie Grey family. Uh, and then I've got another property right next to the airport, uh, which again is very Polynesian. It doesn't look anything like a Sheraton. The second one is a chain that you will find in the South Pacific only is the Tomasina Island Resort, which is a great hotel, but it's not really a European's cup of tea. It's very modern. Uh, it's very successful, but it's really been built with the local markets in mind, being Australia and New Zealand. But these are the only two international chain that we have. Okay, I'm going to throw in a delightful fact here so that everyone knows this for going forward. You will remember this. Um, Dwayne The Rock, who is a big uh, star of screen, is from Samoa. His mother is Samoan. So, He's from uh, Samoa, yeah. He was born in the US from a Canadian father, but a Samoan mother. And he goes back to Samoa every now and again. If you actually are into big American blockbusters, have a look at uh, Hobbs and Show. It's part of the Fast and Furious franchise. And he was actually shooting in Samoa for quite, quite a lot of the movie. And he actually took his mum, who was sitting on set, and, and, and tell him, no, that's not how it's done. So yeah, he's from <laughs> Samoa. Uh, and in the UK, we've got quite a high profile celeb as well, Monica Galetti. If you're into cooking and you watch MasterChef, Monica is from Samoa as well, yeah. I recently saw her do a thing on the BBC where, where she was um, going back to the roots of, of cooking and what have you, actually in France, Seb, and she gets, sees a wild boar getting killed, which is really quite, it, it shocks her, which okay. for a chef who's done an awful lot of cutting up, you would imagine is, is something that's unusual. But anyway, we'll move on from that. Um, I've got one from Kath Mills who asks best time um, to to visit and it's, you know in terms of Samoa is there a better time of year? I mean temperature wise not really because it's always during the day so it's between 28 and 30 degrees and that's regardless of the time of the year the only difference and that's true for the whole of the South Pacific we do have a dry season and a wet season wet season starts early November through to late March. Uh, it doesn't mean it rains all the time. It can rain very, very heavily for about 30 minutes, but then usually the clouds go away and it's sunny for the rest of the day. So it is an all year round destination, more humidity during the winter month, but, 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 but still nice and warm. And okay, we've got a few more questions that um, I think we're gonna have to pass on to you, Seb, so that you can um, answer um, after the event, because I've got, I'm gonna do one more. And then we're gonna then we're gonna wrap up. Um, 
what would you recommend if you're going via um, LA or whichever or whichever way you're going, if you're going via sort of Honolulu and down, or if you're going via New Zealand and up, what would you recommend as the number of nights to spend in Samoa to get a good feeling for it, but without sort of getting, I don't know, just, we've seen everything and relaxingly. Done yeah, how, how with, I mean, it's a small country, so technically you can spend four days if you really prepare your itinerary in advance, but you will be doing quite a lot of running around. Samoa is all about switching off and chilling out. So I would say seven days will really give you a very good taste for the destination. You can visit both main islands, but you can do what the local do best, just chill, relax, recharge the battery. You're on holiday after all, you meant to come back refreshed and not knackered. So a, a week I would say is, is a very good duration. Uh, the longer the better, obviously, but uh, one week, would be about right fantastic and one more fact for you all before we leave Samoa is that there are twice as many Samoans outside of Samoa as there are in Samoa so although they love their home they obviously find something to go and find elsewhere as well that's very thank true you. yeah <laughs> thank you very much for that um Thanks, so Simon. that was that was that was really good I'm going to ask you now um that's the end of the Q&A guys um so thank you very much to you if you can round off now by please sharing with us your competition prize and question. Agents, please get your pens and pads ready as you'll need to enter via our uh, Travel Bulletin website at travelbulletin.co.uk forward slash webinar competition. Please uh, tell us about your prize and your question, please, sir. Right, sure. Well, we, we talked about the Rock and Monica Galetti. We've got three exports in somewhere. A few celebrities, rugby man and coconut. Uh, we are actually producing or, or, or we've got so many coconut plantation that we export them all over the world. So the price today is a Samoa coconut beauty set from the body shop. And uh, the question for uh, the competition would be, um, we've got 10 islands in Samoa, as I mentioned before. I would like you to tell me what the name of the largest island is. So what is the name of Samoa's largest island? Fantastic. Thank you very much for that. So thank you for a great training session um, and we'll see you again at the end. Thank you very much, Simon. Take care. Thank you. OK, it's uh, it's now time to meet our second uh, presenter. It's Jane West, the Regional Manager UK and Ireland of Tourism Fiji. Um, nice to see you again, Jane. Are you Hello, well? Simon. Hello, everyone. Really well. Thank you very much. And what have you been up to? Have you been enjoying... Don't tell me you're in Fiji. I shall get upset if you are. Oh, if only. I wish I'd been stranded there, but no, we're just dreaming <laughs> of Fiji at the moment. Like everyone else, working at home. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm sick of cooking. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. I, I yes, I was talking to a to a supplier the other day who was her, I'm not gonna say where because it's it, it'll just make us all jealous, but he was telling me he he'd unfortunately gone home for Christmas and have been told that he was able to stay there and work from home at his island where he is based in the Caribbean, which is just not fair, is it, really? We don't really want to know, do we? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry, I'm not going to say more about it. I hate him already. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, well, it's good, it's good to see you. So, um, are you ready to, to share your uh, wonderful yes, destination Yes, I of am. Fiji? Absolutely. Right. So, I will well, leave it to you. Thanks, Simon. So, welcome and hello, Bulla, everybody. Um, and um, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And the purpose of today really is to um, talk to you and unveil our care commitment Fiji um, protocols which are endorsed by the world um, or the WTTC um, which you'll be more familiar with and the Fiji has been very busy during this uh, period of lockdown and closed borders and they have created and developed uh, a set of health and safety measures which we intend to help keep future visitors in Fiji safe when the borders reopen. So what have they been doing um, during this time? They've been working on their resorts. Um, fortunately, there's not a great deal of migrant labour in Fiji. So many of the staff who work in the resorts and experiences and transport providers 
actually went back to their villages. Um, they've been fishing in the sea, uh, farming, agricultural tourism has really um, expanded hugely during this time. And, you know, they've, they've been looking after the marine reserves and making sure that all the things that are special and sustainable in Fiji are still protected. But of course, you know, they are people that really enjoy sharing, are missing visitors incredibly. Um, so beforehand, I just wanted to really um, refresh um, and spend a few minutes on um, some of the main reasons why you might want to consider Fiji as a great choice um, in the future for a transformational visit for your customers. Um, so as Seb mentioned, you know, some of the Pacific Islands are a little bit harder to get to than, than ones we're more used to and know more about. The great thing is though, that I mentioned transformational and they really are because they are pristine. Um, they are a bit more unusual and they just, in my view, deliver all the special ingredients that you would expect from you know what we consider to be a holiday of a lifetime. So Fiji does take about 24 hours to get to and it's reachable from the US, from Asia and from Australasia. It's about three hours from New Zealand and Australia. The international date line, which sits on the 180th meridian, goes through that little island you can see on the east there in the north uh, called Taviuni Island. The population of Fiji is over 800,000, so under a million still, and it's warm all year round, not just the people, but the climate as well. Um, very similar to Samoa, the, the more humid and wetter time of the year is, is really between November and March. Um, during the time when it does, we call it the rainy season, all the flowers are out and it's actually a really good time to go surfing as well so it's not necessarily the worst time to go i actually really love it the mangoes are out and the the markets are really vibrant and of course flowers everywhere so the drier season between may and october is just basically cooler it's less humid and it's a great time therefore and really good timing for honeymoon visitors as well but many of our visitors, and there are 17,000 a year come from the UK, will stay a mixture between five and 11 days. So really the older audience may be visiting Australia and New Zealand. They may have already been there a month exploring and touring. They want Fiji for rest and relaxation. So they may not spend as long in Fiji um, as, as others, but the backpackers and divers and honeymooners will generally spend 12 to 17 days or more. Um, you can combine Fiji with Samoa, you'll be happy to know today, and also with other Pacific islands like Tonga and Vanuatu, and Papua New Guinea as well, and Hawaii. Um, currently, it's not possible to fly directly with the Cook Islands and Tahiti, but there is a flight being discussed that may start happening from July. More on that, hopefully, in due course. So... Um, Fiji is an, is an archipelago in the southwest Pacific of 333 islands. A hundred of them are inhabited. So it makes it a marketing dream and a marketing nightmare when you're planning where best to go. I'm going to hopefully help you with that. It has strong ties with Britain. Everyone speaks English, um, but also Fijian and Hindi. And they've just celebrated in Fiji the 50th anniversary since independence. And aside from its volcanic and lush um, landscape and magnificent, magnificent choice of coral white sand atolls and pristine ocean, Fiji has lots of adventure, um, both land, also rivers and, and of course sea activities. Food and eating and drinking is affordable, it's fresh, it's locally grown um, and multicultural. The Lovo is the most renowned celebratory feast in Fiji, um, but also lots of curry, seafood and great international choice. Um, food to table is becoming a very popular concept. Lots of organic farms popping up 
um, like chocolate and um, other activities. Uh, but also at the moment, you know, we're going back to old times. There isn't a lot of money because Fiji depends almost to a third of its GDP on tourism. So there's a lot of bartering going on. You know, taxi drivers are swapping rides for meals, um, you know, and we've heard of people swapping pigs for kayaks. So, um, you know, we're going back to old fashioned good time methods. Dance um, and sharing, eating and singing and playing rugby are all very common things in the Pacific. And Fiji is no exception. So this is part of a Meke dance. And it's one part of a vibrant and living culture, which also includes legends and uh, festivals. And of course, Fiji is famous for its firewalkers. There is a new cultural center near Nandi called the Vo Hub. Um, and this, this really uses dance from different parts of the Pacific. And as Seb touched on as well, it's really important that Fijians also pass down their cultural traditions to the younger generation. Um, but I promise you any, any of your clients going to the Vo Hub as an evening entertainment while they're in the Nandi area will be absolutely wowed by them. And above all, um, visitors choose Fiji um, for rest and relaxation. Um, this view is taken of the mountains of the Sleeping Giant surrounded, um, surrounding the International Gateway in town of Nandi in the western division of Viti Levu, our biggest island. And it's within easy reach, in fact you can see it in the distance, um, of the Mamanutha and Yasara Islands, some of the best known island resorts. Uh, above all, Fiji is all about the famously friendly, happy, hospitable people who are only too happy to share cheeky laughter and wisdom. Even a visit to the market, local buses that never have windows and you don't need bus stops. Um, and in fact, every resort you go to, you'll encounter a really special genuineness. Amongst the many experiences in Fiji, there are new activities. Um, you know, here's the sand dunes at Singatoka on the south coast of Viti Levu, the coral coast, where the um, Fiji Sevens train. But I mentioned earlier, agricultural tourism is really taking off. Um, you could also check out online something called Seventh Heaven. Um, in Fiji, which is a new float floating fl platform um, in the Mamanutha Islands, um, amongst a couple of other interesting activities. And there are lots of sustainable resorts. Um, for example, up in Taviuni, where the Dateline is, um, you've got a resort called Gaya, which you know is, is just totally 100% um, sustainable. But even Six Senses in the Mamanutha Islands is 100% solar powered with Tesla tiles. There's also new to Fiji kite surfing on the Sun Coast, which is the northern coast of Viti Levu. Um, Self-drive is also becoming more popular um, and it's possible to you know, go to different parts of the island that are lesser known. For example, there is one place on the eastern side of Fiji, north of Suva, the capital. Uh, which is a good three to four hours drive from Nandi, where you can actually see black sand beaches in a beautiful marine reserve and swim amongst dolphins on the half moon reef. Um, but basically Fiji is all about choice. Um, you can stay in very, very simple accommodation in a village. Um, it's common to do multi-center trips and also cruising. Um, you can cruise with Captain Cook and Blue Lagoon. And you can do private sailing at the moment. That is the only way you can really come to Fiji is on a private yacht. Um, there are some overwater bungalows. We only have two or three resorts that have overwater bungalows because so many resorts are on the beach and offer beachfront resorts, uh, beachfront uh, rooms or burets as we call them in Fiji. But many of them are characterised by being quite boutique, um, often quite family owned. But there is a good selection of brand resorts as well. So Fiji is not just about the beaches, um, the rainforests and the waterfalls, um, but the Fijian people are really, you know, the, the most precious treasure. Now, if you want to find out a bit more about Fiji, we have the Matai, which means expert online specialist program. 
we will be significantly upgrading it and relaunching it just after Easter. At the moment, it's a very simple course with a few modules. It doesn't take very long to sit. Um, lots of selling tips, um, also video and various webinars that we've been doing for the last year are all recorded, including some of our um, stakeholders in Fiji who've been taking part. Um, do sit the course now while you have a bit more time and we'll be able to update you when that new course goes online. Um, but I mentioned that Fiji is best sold as a multi-centre stay, three to 11 nights on average. Um, try and discover what your clients most want to do in Fiji. What's their budget? You know, do they just want beaches? Um, you know, do they favour being around pools and nearer to culture and adventure? Um, you know, some of the adventure is quite fantastic. Um, I've mentioned on a couple of other webinars that uh, Bear Grylls came to Fiji in last February and filmed the Eco Challenge. That's still available on Amazon Prime Video, so take a look. But Fiji is also really well known for its diving and its snorkeling. Uh, thousands of species, um, two magnificent, hardly visited barrier reefs. Uh, one of them's visible from space, but also great for manta ray um, swimming, you know, swimming with manta rays, taking part in conservation programs. And of course, there is a famous shark dive as well. Um, so without much um, further ado, um, check out our channels. Our presentation will be available to you um, afterwards, you know, when um, Simon and the team at Travel Bulletin can share uh, your details, I'll be happy to send those out to you. Um, but now I'm just going to quickly hand over to Hannah, who's going to uh, run our little video to tell you more about our care Fiji commitment. Thank you. Kiara and I'm Ely and we're Care Fiji Commitment Account Managers. Today we're going to give you an overview into the Care Fiji Commitment, discuss what it is, why we've done it and how it's going so far. So the Care Fiji Commitment is our destination-wide commitment that Fiji is a safe place to travel to when the time is right. From the moment that the threat of coronavirus hit our shores, Fiji made the safety of its people number one priority by making tough but quick decisions and implementing world-class isolation policies, Fiji quickly contained its small number of cases. Across the destination, while borders are closed, our tourism industry is getting ready for the day that visitors are welcomed back to our destination. Border restrictions are in place to protect Fiji, our people, and our visitors. These are reviewed regularly. Our airline, Fiji Airways, launched a phenomenal program, Travel Ready. Our airport, Nandi International Airport, recently achieved ACI Airport Health Accreditation. In June, our government launched the COVID-19 safe guidelines for tourism businesses, and many of our hotels and resorts have been implementing their own COVID-19 safe policy across their operations to comply with these guidelines. Globally recognized control and mitigation measures are in place across Fiji, including testing capabilities right here in Fiji, isolation facilities in place, drop-in fever clinics, and dedicated hotline number for suspected cases. Fiji also launched its very own contact tracing app, the Care Fiji app. Given the importance travelers now place on health and safety, we wanted to ensure that Fiji had a robust program in place to communicate our fantastic credentials to potential travelers. We wanted to ensure that we also communicate this across the destination using one voice and one message. And this message is the Care Fiji commitment. Developed in conjunction with industry and key government stakeholders, the vision is that the Care Fiji commitment will be visible to travelers before and during their visit to give them absolute confidence that Fiji is ready to welcome them back when the time is right. The Care Fiji commitment asks both our tourism industry and our potential visitors to make a commitment. It's a two-way commitment where we commit to keeping our visitors safe 
and they do the same for us by traveling responsibly when they come to Fiji. The program is also more than just a commitment. It provides all the training, tools and resources businesses in Fiji need to align with government's comprehensive COVID safe guidelines for the tourism industry. A big part of it is the Wellness Ambassador Training Program within every tourism business in Fiji who will be responsible for implementing the Care Fiji commitment within their business, including training of their staff in COVID management procedures. And for our international guests who are planning a trip to Fiji, it's important that they not only know that Fiji has their safety at heart, but also that they do their bit to keep Fiji safe too. They do this by deferring their trip if they feel unwell, getting tested before they travel, downloading the Care Fiji app prior to coming by switching on their Bluetooth and showing the app when asked in Fiji, practicing physical distancing, carrying a face mask for use when required, and sanitizing or washing their hands often just like they do at home. Holidays may be a little different in the future, but in Fiji, the weather's still warm, our smiles are just as big, and the Bulla Spirit will be ready to welcome you. We believe the Care Fiji commitment will give visitors the confidence they need to book a holiday in Fiji when the time is right. Vienaka, stay safe and see you soon. Okay, Jane, well done. Thank you very much for that. Um, I've now got some questions for you, so you'll be pleased to know the agents have been firing them in. Great. Um, I'm going to start almost where you, where the sort of presentation finished, if I can. Um, I've had a couple of uh, people ask, and Kath has asked, uh, Kath Mills has asked right at the end here. Um, when are you hoping uh, for Fiji to be open again? It's a million dollar question, isn't it, Simon? Um, thanks, Kath. It's a really, you know, I really appreciate your question. It's something I'm being asked every day. Uh, I think the new strain in Europe and elsewhere has obviously uh, triggered a little more fear. And, you know, Fiji and other parts of the Pacific really depend on their tourism arrivals from Australia and New Zealand. So it's very important to them that they, they respect the, the notion of the Pacific bubble and stay safe. So to answer the question, we actually don't know. Um, but I think with Cook I the Cook Islands now, Islanders now able to travel to New Zealand with no quarantine that should become reciprocal uh, hopefully around about Easter we think and shortly after that we think borders will start to ease open in the region but that's not to say it'll be open for you know people from Europe or the northern hemisphere so I think you know at the moment we're looking at between July and September worst case scenario even into next next year but I think it also depends on the vaccine rollout within the region which is looking very promising and I think supplies will be well and truly arriving you know by Easter down there as well. Okay that's helpful I think like any anyone else I think it's um, this sort of holiday, dare I say it, is is not the cheapest. So people tend to plan a little bit further in advance. So one would hope that if people are looking to go latter end of this year or early next, then mm -hmm. now is not a best time, not a bad time to be looking at it and start planning anyway. Absolutely. Okay. Um, right. We've got plenty to get through. So um, I've got one from um, Angela Tad who asks. Among other things, I've got more than one question from her, but one of them is going to be covered elsewhere. So um, she asked, can you do day trips or, you know, what's the scale, if you see what I mean, of the islands? And can you get in between one and another relatively straightforwardly? That's a really good question. Um, of many Pacific um, islands, well, not just Pacific, but also elsewhere in the world, tropical island groups, it actually is incredibly easy to move from one to the other. It's quite the infrastructure is quite robust. So there are good ferry services that operate between the Mamanutha and Yasawa Islands, for example. Fiji Airways, our national carrier, also operates a domestic carrier called Fiji Link. All are quite affordable. Um, taxis, um, you know, you've got helicopters and seaplanes for those who want a bit more um, pizzazz, um, are a little bit more expensive, but uh, it's really easy to move around, Simon. And certainly quite a lot of the islands are, you know, accessible within an hour, 20 minutes to an hour of where you are. 
Um, so it depends what time of the day you arrive as well. There's no night flying equipment in Fiji. So most people, unless you're staying at Six Senses, for example, where they do offer a 24 hour shuttle service with the marina, most people would need to spend the night in the Nandi area if they arrive after four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but it is, it is really, really easy to get around. But the scale of the country, let's put it this way, it's actually faster to fly to New Zealand, um, which takes three hours than it is to cross um, Fiji on a smaller airplane. It, it, it can be as long as three hours to pass from one side to the other. If you're going by boat, it can be a week. OK, OK, well, that gives us an idea because it's it's it doesn't matter how far apart they are. It's about how yeah. long it takes to get there, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and, and that's, that's the real... right. And a self-drive right around the main island of VT Levu would take you about um, nine to 12 hours if you stopped. So people would do it in maybe a two day, three day trip. OK, well, that's that's useful to know. Um, one on a on a sort of uh, a practical scale, if we're talking about linking this with other other places, I suppose, as well. And uh, one I've got, um, uh, Trish Griffiths says she mentions that she um, twinned Fiji and Samoa in the past and it worked very, very well. Yes. So that's one thing. But I was just going to ask, I've got a question from Jane Walsh who asks, if you're on your way to Australia and you're going that way round, if that makes any sense, so yes. you go into Fiji first. Yeah. Um, this is always a question that is, is almost impossible because you're going to say a minimum of a certain number of days. But what would you allow for getting a feel for Fiji? Well, the shortest time I've been there, Simon, is three days. I would probably not recommend that because, you know, if you're flying this way around, you haven't got a chance to get used to the jet lag. And if you're going straight into Fiji, having connected in one other airport on the way, that jet lag can be a bit of a <laughs> Um, so, you know, I, I would allow at least a minimum three nights, um, but really you're not doing it justice. If, if I were to tell you that the most common feedback, most common piece of feedback we get when people leave Fiji on the questionnaires is we wish we could have stayed longer. So um, we say minimum of five nights is recommended. Um, but, you know, a two week stay is better for honeymooners, divers and people wanting to do multi centre stays. If it's less than five nights, then I'd really restrict it to one or two places um, so maybe stay on the main island and do day trips coming back to the question there about day trips within the Mamanuthas or doing you know cultural trips into villages for example um, or just go straight to an island within the Mamanutha islands it's the easiest thing to do. I think I think look at it base it on five nights minimum because you're gaining a night crossing the date line anyway aren't you? You are yeah. <laughs> okay well that's good um on on that note of interesting but not that interesting facts that i can tell you um i'm gonna it, just explain a silly thing which i didn't know until today that if you raise your eyebrows like that like i'm doing now that's a fijian way of saying yes, yes. is that so jane it is <laughs> So um, we hope everyone remembers that, that you're not going to be questioned on that later. That's not something we're um, going to bring up. Um, also, um, in stars of uh, the silver screen, we had obviously we had Dwayne the Rock um, for um, uh, for the uh, for Samoa, um, and you have uh, Mel Gibson owns uh, an island in the F in <laughs> Fijian island. I understand. Yes, he does. He actually owns an island called Mango Island. It's not spelt Mango, but it's pronounced Mango, and it's in the Lao Group, which is uh, a really pristine area, barely touched by tourism other than Captain Cook cruises, and you can. Uh, you know, take a boat there um, or a private flight in his case. Um, but it, you know, it's a good, a good hour or two from from our nearest airport. So it's right on the east end of Fiji, on the Tongan border, virtually. But yeah, quite stunning. Very lucky people who've got a few yeah. dollars more, should we say? Yeah, but one um, thing to say, Simon, is when you're a celebrity in Fiji, no one bats an eyelid. Mel Gibson walks around Nandi with his family, and no one cares because he's not a rugby player. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, they don't. They only have respect and and uh, and love, un unadulterated yes. love for rugby, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. No, that's fantastic. Okay. Yeah, um, they're the real stars. Um, this is a more of a specific one. This this is from Matt Pinion, who is not just travel agent, who's asked, um, "Do you uh, are there sort of celiacs and people with uh, dietary requirements catered for in restaurants across sort of the Fiji yes. Islands?" Yeah, uh, it depends where you are. Um, the bigger brands 
have chefs with higher level of training and therefore probably more familiar with some of those conditions. But I would say that in most resorts, in my experience, it's quite easy to to deal with, you know, different diets. OK, um, I've got one which is an interesting one from Andrea here um, who asked, I think it's Andrea, I, I'm, I can't read my own writing now, so apologies for that. Um, she has visited some years back and as part of her visit, I'm guessing it may well have been on educational, she stayed in a local village for a couple of nights. Brilliant. Is that still something that's possible? It is possible. The, the culture in um, many parts of the Pacific and indeed Fiji is that you do need to prearrange it, but that can be simply just calling ahead in advance you know you can find out details from wherever you're staying to ring the headman um, and generally when you arrive at the visit village you you must uh, remain on the outside of the village and you will uh, normally bring with you what we call a carver route yangona which is a route um, and it's presented to the chief or the elder of the village um, as what they call a sevu sevu and then you know from there on you might have the carver ceremony from which it's made um, but yes you it's not normal just to rock up in a village you know that's considered a little bit rude but they will be very very welcoming um, and there are many instances where you can stay and the you know the village chiefs <laughs> you know floor for example in a very remote area but just good to arrange it in advance yeah that's that's something to put on your bucket list go and sleep on a floor in someone else's house anyway yes. um <laughs> <laughs> we get, we've got a few more questions we don't but i'm sorry jane we have run out of time no in terms problem of getting yes so i can will... i can reply to those all on email fantastic you, we, we will do that um so that's the end of the uh, that q a session thank you very much for that jane to round off though uh, can you please share with us your competition prize and question? Agents, get your pens and pads ready yes, as yes. you can enter via the TBC website on travelbulletin.co.uk forward slash webinar competition. So, Jane, tell us your prize and question. OK, please. well, you know, in the absence of being able to offer, you know, um, tickets to the Rugby Sevens and uh, a trip to Fiji right now, then I'm, it, it is a humble um, selection of really nice um, pure Fiji products, but also... Um, um, body shop products which actually Seb now tells me are from Samoa as well um, <laughs> glad to be supportive um, so it'll be a dual pack of coconut products um, shower gels and, and creams and the question and the question is what is the name of Fiji's contact tracing app okay so what is the name of Fiji's contact tracing app uh, thank you very much for that jane and thank you again the for pleasure. your training session okay um i've got a final prize for everyone to win today which is donated by us at travel bulletin and it's a 40 pounds amazon voucher i can hear the virtual woo coming on back at me through the ether um our question is when is the Travel Bulletin Family Holidays virtual showcase taking place? That's when is the Travel Bulletin Family Holidays virtual showcase taking place? Uh, by the way, if you haven't registered for that yet, please log on to our website um, and get your name down for it because we've got some wonderful suppliers as we have had today um, that are coming back for that one as well. So um, again, enter all your answers to the competition questions via travelbulletin.co.uk forward slash webinar competition by 4 p.m. on Monday. So we have come to the end of another Travel Bulletin webcast. Um, if you want to watch it again or recap on any of the information, it'll be viewable tomorrow, not only via our website and YouTube, but it'll also be up on our Facebook page as well. Um, I'm sure you'll agree. We've learned a great deal today from our wonderful presenters. Um, that's entirely down to these partners we have. So please, uh, can I welcome back Seb and Jane? Sorry, we're still here. <laughs> right, okay. Seb, are you are you with us? Are you um he is, he's I'm here. coming. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Um I just I I, I hate the uh the leaving this. It's not that I enjoy it that much. No, it is, honestly. Um, it is that I, I don't like saying goodbye to everyone without actually giving them a, a big wave. So we can't see you, but I'm, I'm sure that you're, you're, I will virtually wave for you as well. Um, not thank you very much. much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for joining us, agents. And thank you all uh, for being here today, partners, as well. 
and goodbye from us here today. Goodbye. Thanks, Simon, and thanks, goodbye. everybody. Thank you. Thank goodbye. you, Dicker. Goodbye. Bye.